The year is 1724. That wasn't leading into anything. That was a fact. Well, that is, if you're to believe German historian Herbert Elig and more, because they claim that 297 years of history were made up and we've been lied to for over a thousand years. So what year is it? What is the phantom time hypothesis? And how does it relate to a pope, a holy Roman emperor, and more? Let's dive in. Greetings, pod fans. It's day 16 of Pod Vahida. Pod videos himself every day in April. And today we're back with another conspiracy. This time, it's about time. It's about time for more conspiracies. This is something that really interested me when I first heard about it because time is a construct. Lunchtime doubly so. So what's to have stopped someone from altering time and records? But let's get into the theory and background before we discuss if this could have happened. In 1991, Elig first published The Phantom Time Hypothesis, which theorizes that the years between 614 AD and 911 AD as we know them don't exist, and any history we have from that time is fabricated or is rewritten to be placed in that time to prove that it existed. In my limited research, I've not been able to find a copy of the original publication by Elig, but a 15-page paper by Dr. Hans Ulrich Niemitz, a colleague and collaborator of Elig's, titled Did the Early Middle Ages Really Exist? is freely available, and I've also linked that down in the description. The paper was published in 1995, and to ensure that I keep objective and present the facts according to the theory itself, I'll be taking most of my information directly from that paper. In the opening paragraph, this thesis says that it contradicts all basic knowledge and attacks this historian's self-respect to such an extreme that the reader of this paper is asked to be patient, benevolent, and open to radically new ideas. Which I find really tough to do when I'm being told that I've lied every time I've had to put in my birth year on a website. Huh. It goes on to summarize as follows. Between antiquity, 1 AD, and the Renaissance, 1500 AD, historians count approximately 300 years too many in their chronology. In other words, the Roman Emperor Augustus really lived 1700 years ago instead of the conveniently assumed 2000 years. Basically, the Middle Ages didn't exist, and to prove it, he provides the Carolingian Chapel at Aachen as an example. The Chapel of Aachen is said to have been built in 800 AD, but looking at its design, it appears to be 200 years too early. The method used to construct an arch in this chapel has no predecessor, as this is more of an 11th century design. The method of building choirs with a rising arch and rising barrel vaulting is seen in this chapel, and is then not seen again for another 200 years and the vertical steepness of the arches on the inside of the chapel are, again, not seen in other architecture for another 200 years. So why would this appear in the 800s and then not again until the year 1000? It really doesn't add up, according to, to this. Another example that's used that kind of solidifies the idea that they have here is when the world changed its calendars. So you might know that the calendar that most of the world uses these days is the Gregorian calendar, and thinking about it and thinking about time, you may believe that this has been in place since the early ADs. But it was actually only introduced in 1582 by Pope Gregory to correct the Julian calendar, which had been used up until this point, and it, because of a flaw in the Julian calendar, we were out of sync about 10 days from the, the, the universe. It, like, astronomically, we were 10 days out of sync, so they swapped over to this so it wouldn't be a problem going forward. According to math, which I haven't checked, the number of years it would take for the Julian calendar to go 10 days out of sync is 1,257, but we're correcting it in the year 1,582. So there are apparently around 325 years missing so that we can make this all make sense, but does that mean that the Julian calendar was only first introduced in 325 AD, like 300 years after Julius Caesar died? Nemitz goes on to mention that some historians have claimed to solve this contradiction by saying that scholars in Caesar's time had an incorrect date for the equinox, but by referencing two papers by Herbert Elix, he claims that we have proof that they used the same day as we do to this day. There are a lot more examples in the paper where time doesn't match up, and they even go into different dating techniques such as dendrochronology, looking at wood, and they explain just the flaws 
with that. If you're interested for more information on it, once again, the link is down in the description. If you want to go through that, there's some diagrams. But I would like to jump here to the reasons that Nemitz and Elig like believe this was done at all. And I'll be taking these again from that paper. So it has to do with Otto III who was the Holy Roman Emperor between 983 and 1002. The idea goes that he worked with a Gerber of Arulik, I'll put it on the screen because I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, who was later known as Pope Sylvester II, where they dated something 1000 years after the birth of Christ, as this would look good for them. Just in Christianity, the millennium is a big thing. And then it was just kind of left up to scholars to fill in the blanks, as it were, and invent people and events to fill in the time that was missing, and to make their claim correct. It's also said that Otto III himself constructed the hero Charlemagne as a model of what he wanted to be, and the history of Charlemagne was then left up to scholars to create. So he invented a character and the backstory was created over the years following. Nemitz also adds, uh, with the help of famous Byzantinist uh, Peter Schreiner, that the Emperor Constantine VII had the entire Byzantine history rewritten and told his transcribers to destroy the original versions. The reasons he put this into the paper is explained when he says, It is not important to explain the motivation of the Emperor Constantine VII. I only want to demonstrate that an action of rewriting and faking like this has happened. If it could happen in Byzantium, it could have happened in any other place too. So he's using this as a an example that someone, someone powerful, could get all of their historians to completely change documents, just d change everything, and then destroy any of the originals. Which possible, I guess? And that is, in effect, the phantom time hypothesis. If you want more information and to go into it more depth yourself, uh, I would recommend just looking things up. There's some wonderful articles which explain it, and also, again, the actual paper that I'm quoting from is in the description. Now, finally, I think I've gone through it kind of as clearly as I want to in a short video. Um, I didn't want to go into too much detail, but I also wanted to explain the ideas behind this and like some of the information as to why it could be believed that this is correct. But now I want to go into how people commonly refute these claims and prove that we are living in 2021, the living nightmare, but you know, we're, that that's the year that we're in. So first of all, if Charlemagne and the Carolinian dynasty, the one that was happening when the chapel was created, were fabricated, it would mean that all of the world's history around that time would also have to be created to fill in the blanks. During this phantom time, we had Anglo-Saxon England, 53 popes, there were four emperors of the Byzantine Empire, the life of the prophet Muhammad, and in China, the entire Tang dynasty was between these years. So just a, a, a small few things that happened in this block of time that they're saying didn't exist. And that's across the globe, might I add. That is so much history to just gloss over and say that the world somehow just came together to invent. For the math used to find out that there was missing time when we changed from the Julian to the Gregorian calendar, it's it's countered with the following. I'm gonna read this out word for word so I don't miss anything because it's lots of words and I'm gonna get it wrong. The Gregorian reform was never purported to bring the calendar in line with the Julian calendar as it had existed at the time of its institution in 45 BC, but it had existed in 325 AD, the time of the Council of Nicaea, which had established a method for determining the date of Easter Sunday by fixing the vernal equinox on March 21st in the Julian calendar. By 1582, the astronomical equinox was occurring on March 10th in the Julian calendar, but Easter was still being calculated from a nominal equinox on March 21st. In 45 BC, the astronomical vernal equinox took place around Mar March 23rd. Elig's three missing centuries thus correspond to the 369 years between the institution of the Julian calendar in 45 BC and the fixing of the Easter date at the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. And finally, experts in dating things, not Will Smith from that one movie, people who look at how old stuff are, have come out and said that things like dendrochronology actually help refute the claim rather than assisting, which is very interesting. I'll leave it up to you to decide what you want to believe. Maybe this is true and we're living in 1724, but I'm going to go with the idea that seeing a change of calendar caught Elix's attention. He looked into this for a long time and fell down a rabbit hole of coincidences, grabbed some like-minded scholars along the way, and just grabbed onto certain parts of something, and 
just missed bits in the middle and then it's brought us to you know me talking about this uh, about it being ridiculous but what do you think do you believe it i definitely believe that it could have happened i don't believe this one specifically just reading into it and reading the the things that refute the claims i don't believe it but the example that he uses where the emperor got his historians to rewrite all of history and delete the originals that's that could totally happen like rewriting history is just i don't know being the only person with the history book if we somehow lost the internet and paper books and then someone was like oh here's a here's a book i found that tells me about you know what happened on x date we'd have to believe it but yeah are there any conspiracies you'd like to see me talk about i have one for next week it's small uh, lesser known i wasn't too sure about it i hadn't heard of it uh it was it was said to me and i've looked into it and it's interesting it's also irish so ooh. but yeah i'm enjoying like what i believe to be lesser known ones because i've listened to some podcasts and uh watched some content but the two that i've done now sugar and the phantom time hypothesis they were they were completely like new for me when i got into them so yeah um i'm liking that because i'm doing my own research and by that i mean i'm google searching and then writing out notes uh, but yeah um if there's any conspiracies that you'd be interested in seeing me talk about let me know i would be overjoyed because uh i have the one for next week but i would like to keep this going for a little while because it's fun and that's all for today um, I'll talk to you all tomorrow. Slob.